Hi, I'm Rene Rocha with Morgan & Morgan. Many people have reached out to our firm about the building collapse in Surfside, Florida, and we formed a co coalition with some of the best building collapse lawyers in the country. We're local here in South Florida, and I'm leading the investigation into this tragic collapse. My thoughts and prayers go out to the family of those affected. Uh, for anyone still missing family, I hope they are found uh, safely as soon as possible. What we're doing is trying to find answers for people who are suffering and who need to know why this happened. The city of Surfside recently released documents to the public uh, describing some of this building's history. I wanna walk through some of that with you and um, discuss that in context with some of the other reports that we've been evaluating since the collapse happened a few days ago. This is a report from October, 2018. Um, it was a visual inspection of the building uh, by a group of engineering consultants. They evaluated uh, everything from the facade and the electrical system down to the subsurface slabs and structural integrity. And uh, some of the things they found, I think will likely be proven to be directly relevant to the collapse that happened a few days ago. One of the biggest issues that jumps out from this report um, are leaking in the pool deck and jacuzzi deck and resulting structural problems. Um, you know, as mentioned in the report, um, there was failure in the waterproofing underneath the, the pool. And it was so severe that the engineering consultants in 2018 said that if the problems were not remedied, in the near future, the concrete deterioration would expand exponentially. Now, a lot of that resulted from an original design failure in how this was designed to begin with. So what should have happened is that the waterproofing underneath the pool deck, the slab holding it up, should have been on a slope allowing for drainage to happen. That's not how the building was designed or constructed. Instead, the waterproofing was laid flat. And what that meant is there was no escape route for water. It would just sit on the concrete slab and the waterproofing until it evaporated. What that does, if you have that scenario, is allows for major corrosion to occur. There are many things that can affect the integrity of a building, but none more powerfully than the long-term effects of nature. Repeated exposure to salt, air, or water can be devastating to buildings if appropriate measures are not taken. And unfortunately, there's little evidence that such measures were taken at this building, as we'll discuss further. What these consultants stated here is that the main issue with the building structure uh, is what I mentioned. They attributed that to a major error in the development of the original contract documents by the architects and engineers who designed and built the building. Um, now, what were the practical implications of that? Was this something that nobody noticed? Absolutely not. It's something that would have been readily apparent for many years. It clearly was apparent in 2018, and the extent of the damages that they were seeing resulting from this um, indicated that it had been going on for many, many years before that too. Um, to put this more succinctly, I will refer to another um, document drafted by these same consultants. The pool and the jacuzzi are leaking and need to have the plaster removed, all discovered concrete spalling and cracking repaired and a new plaster finish installed. And this gets to a bigger problem. You don't just have water leaving a pool, that water is just sitting because it can't drain and it's causing severe deterioration in the concrete underneath it. And why that's relevant here is that concrete was sitting below surface uh, in the parking garage, thick concrete slabs that were supporting the rest of the building. As it says in the next highlighted section here, it appears that the concrete frame slab that supports the pool plaza above the garage has undergone some previous concrete patching and epoxy injection. So what that means is this has been a problem that was noticed and they attempted to paper over it. However, it was not performed satisfactorily, it needs to be completed again. What did that look like? 
this is what it looked like. Cracks in thick concrete slabs in the parking garage. It's difficult to make out, but if you look closely, you can see the moisture emanating from these cracks too. So you have an ongoing leak for many, many years causing the deterioration of this thick concrete slab that's supporting a lot of the building. You see it in support pillars down here. This isn't a very clear picture, but it's indicative of the lack of structural support as the concrete erodes from repeated exposure to water. Now, the process by which water will affect concrete integrity is a simple chemical process. Concrete is made up of a number of different ingredients, one of which is limestone, uh, which has a chemical reaction with several of the other ingredients to form the thick concrete that we're all familiar with. The water intrusion will reverse that chemical reaction and will separate the constituent parts that are bonded to create the thick concrete. And when you have that, the, the thickness and the bond erodes and it can no longer support the weight that it used to support. So you have the concrete reverting back into its original elements, one of which being limestone. And that was seen throughout the garage. In fact, it was noted that the condo association had to pay to paint several cars because the concrete uh, limestone, a portion of the concrete would leach from these cracks that you're seeing right here onto cars and cause major paint damage. Um, go back to the original report here. If I can find that, um, I will show you in a second here. Here we go. Leaching of calcium carbonate deposits, that's limestone, calcium carbonate, deposits in numerous areas has surely caused CTS, that's the building, to pay to repaint numerous cars. This leaching will continue to increase until proper repairs are completed. So again, what this is indicating is that this was an ongoing problem for many, many years already by 2018. That's three years prior to this collapse. The consultants continue and say that they were convinced that the previously installed repairs were ineffective and they needed to completely replace the cracked and spalled concrete slabs. Here's some more pictures of the problems. These are areas that were papered over, as I indicated earlier, um, but ineffectively so. And you can see these other cracks in areas of moisture and uh, you know the mildewy colors that you see here. So what this is showing is that already three years ago, there were major problems resulting from this pool. It's poorly designed, poorly built, poorly maintained. The problems that were caused by the original failures in design and construction were exacerbated by the failure to remedy them. And, you know, there's, there's a reason why they weren't remedied. Um, before I leave here, you can see some of these calcium carbonate icicle looking things coming out of these uh, patch jobs right here. But the issue is always uh, in circumstances like this, one of money, and these repairs were not cheap. They would have caused major, major um, discomfort to the residents because ultimately you would have to completely remove this pool decking area and replace these massive concrete slabs in the parking garage. Um, and here's the estimate. Total estimate of all the fixes that needed to happen at this building was $9.1 million. This is from 2018. Um, and as you see here, the garage entrance and pool deck remediation were the biggest issues of that $3.8 million. Facade remediation, which include issues um, considerably likely related to these, uh, you know, cracking and spalling in the concrete, but more in more of a aesthetic way uh, on the facade than really structural, although the balconies had some issues, $3.2 million almost. So this was known clearly 
as of 2018. It's likely it was known before then too. At the very least, it should have been. Um, you know, this is this is likely going to be uh, a major major component of the failures. It's hard to say right now definitively what the answers are because we need to do a forensic analysis of the materials used at that site, as well as a complete, um, you know, head to toe investigation of the original plans and drawings, which we have and are evaluating. Um, but it would be very surprising if this was not a major uh, aspect of the problems. There have been some other um, some other theories that have been raised by people observing the damages, um, different engineers and experts who have relevant expertise um, have chimed in and posited a few different theories. Um, one of which uh, that has been discussed is the fact that they had roof repairs going on on this building right now. Some question whether they may have overloaded the roof. Um, and thereby caused failures by putting too much weight on a roof that couldn't hold it. Now, that didn't strike us or many of the experts that we've talked to as particularly plausible because those are issues that are usually fairly well known. You generally know what a roof is gonna hold. However, when you have a roof sitting on top of compromised, uh, slabs, maybe you don't. And maybe that roof rating that you are uh, doesn't reflect the actual facts of a compromised structure underneath that roof. The areas uh, of repairs were right here in the center of the building. If you watch the, um, the live video of the building as it falls, it appears that this was the area that fell first, and then this area over here fell a few seconds afterwards. That could be indicative of, uh, of some kind of stress that the roof repairs may have uh, contributed to this, but it's unclear. That's gonna take some time to unwind. Uh, to show you here just an, a bird's eye view of it, this is where the pool is. Um, this is the parking garage is underneath here. And this appeared to be the area that first collapsed, followed by this area. Um, so the point is, already with what we know, which is very little in the grand scheme of things, but um, very significant, very likely in the grand scheme of things, there's some major problems that very likely um, were related to the ultimate failure that happened. And as we normally see um, in issues like this, it's not something that just happens, it's something that happens for years and years, potentially decades. And it's very likely the result of multiple failures stacked on top of each other, not just a single failure um, of one item or another. So we will continue to evaluate this um, our experts are on the ground. Um, we continue to talk with families of those affected. And uh, as I said earlier, our, our hearts are with you, our prayers are with you, and we're doing everything we can to get you answers. And we're happy to respond to you personally. Um, you can reach out to our firm. My email is rrocha, R-R-O-C-H-A at forthepeople.com. Um, we'll be here 24 hours a day uh, to help. And we're going to find answers. Thanks a lot.